Okay, let's review the ellipse. This would be something very typical of what you would see on your test. And by the way, you know it's an ellipse because both the x and the y are squared and you are adding, okay? So I can see that my center would be negative one because that's what makes it zero, five. So let's go ahead and let's fill that in. And I would go ahead and come over here to your graph. You're always gonna have to graph on the test and plot out your center, negative one, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's somewhere right in here. There's your center, okay? Now, this doesn't change. The bigger number is your a squared. So this right here is your a squared. So that means a is nine. Now I don't ask you that, but you need to know that because that is the distance you're gonna move up and down because it's under the y. So we're gonna go up nine, so right there, and we're gonna go down nine. I knew I was off the graph, so I just kind of guessed right there. So we're gonna go down nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We make sure it lines up so we're gonna be right there. And by the way, I can see that that vertex point is at the point negative one, one, two, three, four, negative four. Okay, um, I know those are my vertexes, my vertices, I should say, because this is the bigger distance, so it's gonna be more elongated this way, okay? So if I wanna go ahead and fill this out, I can. Um, let me show you how I can do it mathematically without even looking at my graph. Since I'm going up and down, okay, it's gonna affect the y value. And you remember one time I added nine, so that's gonna make that 14. And one time I would subtract nine. Five minus nine is what, negative four? And look, do you see that's the point I have? So you, again, you can either tell by looking at your graph or you can just kind of do it mathematically. Now, when it asks, let me go ahead and graph this by the way. Notice I need to move left and right six, a value of six, this would be your B. Take the square root of that to know how far you're going to move. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And make sure it lines up. So about right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be about right there. Oops. That's what I get for looking through my screen. So about right here. So here's your ellipse. Draw a nice smooth curve through this. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. That's what I get for looking through my screen. Hopefully you can do a better job, okay? I know my foci sits somewhere in here, but let's find their exact value, okay? I'm just kind of giving you a visual. To find your foci, make sure you use the equation c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Your a is your bigger value. So you're gonna see c squared is what, 45? <clears throat> so c would be the square root of 45 which there's a perfect square in there. Hopefully you can see that would be plus or minus three square roots of five. Now I'm gonna always be looking for this, okay, when I grade your test. So make sure I can see somewhere where you found your C value, right there, okay? And I'm gonna need that for my foci. Um, this is a gross point, so there's no really good way to add it to here. So what you're gonna do your foci move right here, and it's going up and down, so it's gonna affect your y value. So take your center point, and one time you're gonna add this c value, and one time you would subtract. So the really easy way to show it is just add and subtract, and what was it, three square roots of five? Yeah. So that would be, right there, your foci. And yes, that's written really sloppy right there. If you were going to graph it, Find out what the square root of 45 is approximately, okay? So use your calculator. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna use my calculator real quick and it tells me that it's about 6.7. So I'm gonna go up about 6.7, count up 6.7, about 6.8 almost, and that would be your foci. Go down 6.7, there's your foci. So make sure that you've graphed them and they look pretty good. So this is your exact value five plus or minus three square roots of five, okay? Hopefully it's written on a little neater than that. So it's gonna look just like that. Okay, the only other thing you need to know is your eccentricity, and remember you find that by taking your C over A. Here's your C value, just worry about the positive value, and your A value, do you remember your A value is nine, so it would be nine, but three and nine will simplify, so it looks like here is your eccentricity is the square root of five over three. So that's it. They won't be any harder than that. Okay. Now, look at 62. 
it wants you to write the equation given this information. And you could very easily have one like this. <clears throat> Plot what you know so you can kind of see what you have to work with. So it looks like I have the vertices of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so somewhere in here. And I will label that because mine's kind of off. And negative 4, 5, so somewhere in there. Hopefully that lines up like my battery is about to die. So there's another vertice, okay, at negative 4, 5. Since it's my vertice, here's what I know. It's elongated this way, right here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and figure out my center. You know your center has to fall right between those two. So you can add these two together and divide by 2, but either way, you should see your centers right here, and that would be 0, 5, okay? That would be your center. So, every ellipse looks like this. x squared over something plus y squared over something equals 1. That's if it's at 0, 0. But I just found my center to be 0, 5. So, nothing changes with my x. But my y value is 5. So, I need to write this as y minus 5. Okay. Now, this right here is the distance you moved going left and right from your center. So look right here, you can see you moved a distance of, what was it, four? So I know that this is gonna be that squared or 16. All right, now I have no idea how far we're gonna go up or down, so I've gotta kinda of figure that out. But they did tell me the foci. And to plot your foci, this is, remember, this distance right here, <clears throat> is how far you moved from the center. So I said, oh, about 2.4, if you want to graph it, okay? So if I go over about 2.4, it's gonna be right there as a foci, and I'm gonna go over 2.4, about right here is another one, okay? That's the distance. The exact distance you moved was the square root of six in each direction. All right, so anytime they use the word foci, you know you're gonna use this equation, a squared minus b squared. Your C is the distance you moved, which was the square root of 6. Your A is your bigger number. We know this is the bigger number because these are the vertices. Remember, that was 4. When you square this, you get boring 6. 4 squared is 16. Solve that, and you can see B squared is 10. Okay, 16 minus 10 okay, is what would give you 6. So right under here, you would put the value 10 and you would have it, and that's it, okay? Now we're gonna do one other one, and honestly, if you can do these three for the test, you're probably gonna be okay as far as the ellipse goes because everything you need to know is right here. Now I know this is an ellipse because both the x are squared and the y are squared, and I'm adding, okay? Both of them are positive, so I know it has to be an ellipse. Put your x's together. So, just a minute, I've got to fix my phone, my thumbs are going numb. Put your y's together. Move the boring number to the other side. Okay, make sure when you move it to the other side that you change the sign. It's negative on this side, so now it's positive. Now remember when you complete the square that this has to be a 1, so I'm going to factor out the 4. Leave some space for this magic number. Remember how you find this magic number is you half this. Now this doesn't come out pretty, so let me do it like this. So you half it, and then you square it, which would be 9 fourths. So I'm gonna have to add 9 fourths. Now, make sure that whatever you add on this side, you add on the other side. If you multiply these two together, do you see how your fours cancel? So you just have a nine. So make sure you come over here and you add nine. I'm gonna just go ahead and finish this side. So look what you've got here. You're trying to write this as something squared. So obviously this first number is going to be x because that's how you would get x squared. The way you get this value in here is whatever you got when you took half of this. This is a negative 3, so it would be a negative 3 halves. That's what's going to go right there. Okay, So don't make that hard. So it's this value, half. All right, so let's do this one getting a glare here. Remember this has to be a 1, so we're going to factor out a 9. You'll just notice that these are always all done the same way. How do you find this magic number? You half this, which would give you 1, and you square it. Well, 1 times 1 is 1. 
But notice you didn't just add one, you actually added nine. So add nine again to the other side, okay? So what do you have here? You're wanting to write this as something squared. It's gonna be y. What did you get when you took half of this? You got a positive one. So this is 18 plus 18, which is what, 36? You are almost done, but do you remember this is supposed to equal one? So you have to divide everything by 36. Now if things don't cancel here nice, then just leave it, okay? But they do because four will go into 36 nine times. So I have x minus three halves squared over nine. Nine will go into 36 four times, so that simplifies. And I think on the test, they will simplify for you nice like that, equals one. And there you go. And you can see that you have an ellipse, and the center would be three halves, negative one. And that's it.